Hey there, guys and gals. Welcome to my audio story channel. If you enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. So, let me introduce myself. I'm Lin Jiang, and I just hit the big three to five this year. Now, buckle up, cause I've got a story for you about how I ended up living far from my folks. Picture this, I was head over heels for this guy, and we'd been going steady for three whole years. I'm talking butterflies, fireworks, the whole shebang. I just couldn't let go of that earth-shattering, once-in-a-lifetime kind of love, you know? Now my parents? They weren't exactly thrilled about me packing up and moving to the boonies. They were all worried I'd be lonely and lost in a strange place. But your girl here was stubborn as a mule. I was convinced that following my man to his hometown was gonna be the start of my happily ever after. Let me tell ya though, life ain't no fairy tale. This whole married and moved away gig? It's been one heck of a roller coaster ride. Some days, when I'm feeling down in the dumps, I just gotta suck it up. I mean, I can't go crying to my folks, right? I made my bed, now I gotta lie in it. But here's the kicker, that spark between me and the hubby? It's not exactly burning as bright as it used to. It's like we're just existing together, you know? I'm trying my darndest to keep the ship afloat, but deep down, I'm feeling lonelier than a cloud in a clear sky. And don't even get me started on the bedroom situation. My man's been hitting the bottle pretty hard, and let's just say his performance ain't what it used to be, if you catch my drift. So, this past Chinese New Year, the hubs jets off for some job in who knows where, leaving me and the kiddo back at his parents' place. Thank the heavens his folks are still spry enough to help out with the little one, cause let me tell ya, being a full-time mama is no joke. To make ends meet, I decided to open up a tiny clothing store. But business? It's about as hopeful as a snowball in July. I'm barely scrapping by each month, and with the hubby MIA and his paycheck nowhere to be seen, things are getting real tight. I used to think love could conquer all, you know? But now I'm wondering if our relationship's got enough oomph to weather this storm. The other day, I rang up the hubby, hoping he'd show a lick of concern about our money troubles. Hey babe, rent and utilities are due. What should we do? His response? Cool as a cucumber, Paychecks come in, in a couple days. Just hang tight. But I've been hanging tight for months now, and still no dough in sight. Back in the day, I thought I could live on love and air. But real talk? When you're broke, love don't pay the bills. To save some cash, I've had to make some changes. New clothes? That's a luxury I can't afford anymore. I'm rocking my old threads like it's nobody's business. Now, I might not be a supermodel, but I've got legs for days, and I still turn heads when I'm out and about. I sell men's clothes, and there's this one customer, Su Tao, who's become a regular. He swings by once a month, sometimes bringing his work buddies along. We've gotten pretty chummy, even added each other on WeChat. Turns out, Tao's from out of town too, working on some project here. We've got a lot in common, being away from home and all. It's nice to have someone who gets it, you know? But here's the latest drama. My in-laws caught this nasty bug recently. We tried the whole medicine cabinet, but nothing worked. Had to drag M to the hospital for some four action. Talk about stress city. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Life's throwing me some curveballs. So there I was, forced to shut down my little shop and rush to the hospital to play nurse for my in-laws. I'm talking 24-7 bedside duty, y'all. I rang up the hubby, begging him to get his sister to lend a hand. But did he step up? Heck no. She hit me with the ol' I gotta watch the kid excuse. Talk about a punch to the gut. I'm telling ya, at this point, I'm feeling lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. My marriage? It's on life support. The hubs is colder than a penguin's tootsies, and he's about as understanding of our money troubles as a rock. It's like I'm trapped in one of those Chinese finger traps, you know? The more I struggle, the tighter it gets. But wait, it gets better. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, BM. The kiddo catches the same bug. Now I'm running around like a chicken with its head cut off, trying to take care of everyone. I swear, I was this close to losing my marbles. Let me tell ya, there were nights I cried myself to sleep. And I'm not just talking a few sniffles here and there. I'm talking full on, ugly crying, mascara running down my face kinda tears. It wasn't just cause I was dog tired, though trust me, I was. It was all the unfairness, all the frustration, all the why me? Moments catching up to me. And where's my knight in shining armor during all this? 
MIA, as usual. Didn't even cough up any dough for the medical bills. I had to go hat in hand to every Tom, Dick, and Harry I knew, beg in for loans. But then, like a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day, in walks Tao. This guy, I swear. When he heard about my situation, he came rushing to the hospital faster than you can say Prince Charming. Not only did he help me out of my financial pickle, but he was sweeter than a peach pie at a county fair. Y'all, this man went above and beyond. I'm talking home-cooked meals every day cause he knew I wasn't eating right. I mean, can you believe it? I was so touched I could have cried, again. Finally, after what felt like forever, the in-laws and kiddo got the all clear to go home. Life started to get back to some kind of normal. But here's the kicker, Tao and I, we got closer than two peas in a pod. Talk about a silver lining, right? After all this drama, I've come to realize something money talks and BS walks. I stopped holding my breath for the hubby's paycheck or a crumb of his attention. Cause now? I've got Tao in my corner, backing me up with both his wallet and his heart. Whenever Tao's got some free time, he whisks me away in his fancy car. We hit the road, leave all the drama in our rearview mirror, and soak up all the pretty sights. Let me tell ya, in those moments, I'm happier than a pig in mud. Then came the day that changed everything. Picture this. We're sitting in his swanky Mercedes, and out of the blue, Tao drops the L-bomb on me. And you know what? Your girl here didn't say no, but S-O he began to gently caress me in the car. My husband hasn't slept with me for too long. I know it's wrong, but in the end, I still did some things with him in his car. He was as enduring as a marathon runner, and I had never felt so happy before this. When the dust settled and I had a hot minute to really chew on things, my conscience started yapping at me like a chihuahua on coffee. Deep down, I'm not trying to be some homewrecking hussy, you know? But life's been rougher than a cob, and it's got me acting all kinds of crazy. And Tao? He's like a warm blanket on a cold night, all cozy with his sweet talk and deep pockets. I'm telling ya, I'm in deeper than a catfish in the Mississippi. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times when I'm kicking myself six ways to Sunday, feeling guiltier than a kid with their hand in the cookie jar. I can't help but wonder, what if I'd met a guy like Tao earlier? Maybe my life would have taken a whole different turn, you know? But here's the thing, folks. Life ain't no choose-your-own-adventure book. You can't flip back a few pages and pick a different path. Nope, we're all just along for the ride, hanging on by the skin of our teeth while fate throws us for a loop. But I gotta say, the more time I spend with Tao, the more that nagging voice in my head starts to pipe down. It's like, with every date, every stolen moment, I'm tossing another shovel full of dirt on my guilt. These days, I'm letting my hair down and my guard with it. All those sideways looks and gossipy whispers from the peanut gallery, they're just background noise now. I'm too busy dreaming about forever with my new man. I know, I know. It ain't exactly the fairy tale ending I had in mind when I was a little girl. But hey, life's funny like that. Sometimes you gotta kiss a few frogs before you find your prince, even if he comes riding in on a white Mercedes instead of a white horse. However, he often makes unreasonable demands. For example, he wants to do things on the sly in the park, like having me sit on his lap, and then you know what happens. Maybe rich people don't lack money to book a room in a five-star hotel, but they just like to seek thrills in the wild. I love him more than my husband, so I didn't refuse. But then, one day, suddenly, mend in my own business at the shop when in walks Tao, cool as a cucumber. He's all, let's grab some grub, I've got something to tell ya. My spidey senses started tingling, but I played it cool. We hit up our usual fancy joint, and after knocking back a few cold ones, Tao drops the bomb. I'm hitting the road tomorrow. Project's done. I nearly choked on my chopsticks. Already? I squeaked, my heart sinking faster than the Titanic. Tao didn't sugarcoat it. Time flies, darling. This is goodbye. For good. I'm telling ya. The waterworks started flowing like Niagara Falls. I begged him, can't you stay? For me? But he shut that down real quick. We ain't got no future, sweetheart. Let's cut ties, keep our families out of this mess. My heart? It was bleeding. I threw out a Hail Mary. What about Maureen me? But Tao wasn't having it. Divorce ain't in my cards. This was just a fling. Time to face the music point zero, even though I knew it was coming, herein, those words felt like a kick in the teeth. 
I knocked back a drink, choking out. Just go. Pretend we never met. Tao, bless his heart, got all worried. But I shooed him away. I'll be fine. Go on, get. As soon as he was out of sight, I lost it. Ugly crying, mascara everywhere. Endings are always a real kick in the pants, ain't they? Back at home, I was like a lovesick teenager, trying to reach out to Tao. But every time, nothing but crickets. He'd gone and deleted me faster than you can say ghosted. Talk about a punch to the gut. Nights were the worst. Lying there in that big ol' empty bed, my mind kept playing our greatest hits on repeat. All them sweet moments? They were haunting me like a bad country song. Every day felt like I was dragging a ton of bricks. Cause deep down, I knew Tao was gone with the wind. Sometimes I'd catch myself wondering if it was all just some crazy dream. Trying to get used to the single life? Harder than trying to nail jello to a tree. Y'all ever heard that poem by Emily Dickinson? Had I not seen the sun, I could have borne the shade. That's me to AT. Every night, like clockwork, I'd be staring at my phone, dealing Tao's number over and over. Deep down, I knew it was about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. All I get was that robot lady telling me, sorry, the number you have dialed is currently switched off. Please check the number and try again.